In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this animation going over my process and workflow. This animation is highly influenced by this Nike spot by Oddfellows. It's one of my favorite pieces. It's so dynamic and fun and full of texture. And I particularly like this stacking of the different frames creating this effect here. And like most everyone, I love the True Detective title sequence. So I wanted to try and replicate a few of those effects used here. To start, we'll need some 3D models and textures. I'm not a 3D modeler, so I'll need some help. So I'm using assets from this video sponsor, Yellow Images. Yellow Images is an amazing marketplace and the first place where I've seen these 360 images. So they give you a 3D model, which you can view and rotate in browser, find an angle that works perfect for your shot, and then download a single PNG. That is really high resolution and has a pixel perfect transparent background. But what I'm gonna do is download 16 images of the model doing a full rotation. So to get our spinning baby, which is 16 PNGs at the moment, we are going to, in After Effects, go up to File, Import, Find those PNGs, click the first one, make sure that PNG sequence is selected and click import. And that will stitch them together, animate it in a sequence. Let's right click the sequence, go to interpret footage, main. We want this frame rate to be 12 frames per second and we want it to loop, let's say 10 times. There, that works great. For the skating astronaut, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm gonna import those 16 images of the astronaut skating, add them all into a new comp. Let's scale them down a fair bit and I'm gonna trim them all down to the two frames long, and I'm gonna select them all, right click, choose keyframe assistant and sequence layers and click okay. And that's gonna sequence them all in this staircase, which is exactly what a PNG sequence would do. But from here, we can click the back end of any of them and drag them all the way out. And now as it plays, they're gonna stack on top of each other. To put them in a line, I'm gonna select the bottom one, drag it over to the left, select the top one, drag that over to the right, then select them all, open up our align panel, make sure we're aligning to the selection and click distribute horizontally. And now we've got the effect that we want. So now let's put this all together. I start as always by blocking in the timing for the animation. So I put together three comps of our animated spaceman and baby with a different colored background underneath each one. I also made sure the timings of the rotation lined up as well. So when this transition from the astronaut switches to the baby, they're both facing forward, keeping that same rotation momentum and the cut just lines up a little nicer. This is just really to lock down the really basic elements for how long each scene will be on screen. And then I slowly started adding in the detail. In the next pass, I turned everything grayscale. I added a circle to this middle section, added a vignette to each of the scenes and made this matte transition here. So how I make a vignette and do a lot of the shadings in this video is by creating a new solid with control plus Y, black will be fine for this. And then going up to our shape tool, selecting ellipse tool and double clicking on the ellipse, which will create a mask at our comp width and height. Then I'm gonna select inverted. I'm gonna press F on my keyboard to bring up the mask feather and just start really feathering that out. And here we can see we've got a vignette and we can just turn down the opacity if we think that's a bit too dark and maybe increase the feathering if we want a bit more of a gradient. We can even double click this mask and increase its size as well if we only want it on the very edges and the corners. For the matte transition, I duplicated our spinning baby comp, put it over our skate slider, and then added some scale keyframes. So it starts off filling up the entire screen and then scales down to something pretty small before we transition into the next scene, then selected our skate slide comp, and then under track mat, selected alpha mat of the baby. So now it's only visible during the bounds of that baby's silhouette. Our skate comp has a black background as well. So that when it's matted by the baby, it reveals this gray background and we get this nice difference in values, which I really wanted. I also split the skate comp as well and removed the track mat at the very start so that I didn't need to worry about any sort of holes appearing in between the baby's arms as it rotated before we got to this part here where it shrinks down. I also increased the contrast of our baby at the end as well by using a curves effect and as always added an adjustment layer with a posterized time effect set to 12 frames per second if you're a regular on this channel, you know I love everything at 12 FPS. And if you're not a regular, consider subscribing and please, well, smash that like button. It really helps these videos and make sure I can keep creating free tutorials. The next pass was for adding transitions. I added a position animation for the start of the skate animation. So it just slides in from the left over a few frames. And then for this transition here, I duplicated this circle, which is behind the spaceman and faded it on for a few frames before this cut. And I'm only revealing it for these last two frames slightly on the edge using the same method we did with our vignette. So I've got a feathered mask and I've just animated its mask paths to move slightly from the bottom right to further covering the middle. 
just so we get a slight indication of that circle before we cut to this scene here. I also added a slight scale animation to this circle, which shrinks slowly and then starts to shrink really fast before we cut to our baby here, just to give the slightest bit of anticipation. And for the baby transitioning out at the end, I warped it using the liquify tool in the same direction that our skateboarder comes in. So as this moves to the right, a skateboarder comes in from the left. The liquify effect is great. It's under the distort menu in effects. And I just grabbed the smudge tool, keyframed the distortion mesh, and just started pushing elements of this comp over to the right. I also split this comp as well. So the liquify effect is only visible on these last two frames. And that's just to make sure that the effect wasn't rendering on all of these frames beforehand, because boy, did it take a lot of time to render these two frames here. I mean, they're warping a 4K graphic with a lot of effects applied to it, so it's kind of expected. But from here on out, I think I was viewing everything at about one third resolution. The next pass was for shading. Here I added some additional lighting to each scene. In the first scene, I added this light gradient on the bottom left here using the same technique as our vignette. It's just a solid that I added a white fill to. And then I've got this pretty funky shaped mask going around it with some really high feathering that just creates a nice soft gradient. And that covered our baby too. And I didn't really want to lose the contrast that the baby had with the background, especially down at the bottom on the feet. So I duplicated our baby comp, added it to the top here, gave it a black fill, and then again, like our vignettes and other shading, created a feathered mask that covered the bottom of our baby. So we get a bit more contrast in the bottom of the legs down here. I also added a highlight to the bottom right of this circle here, using the exact same method, but with a white fill. And I'm stacking up three layers of highlight with different feathering. So it was just a lot more of a gradual gradient. The first one is really subtle and has lots of feathering. The next one has a bit less feathering. And then the final one is really tight and has barely any feathering at all. So we get a nice natural fall off and it kind of looks a bit like an eclipse. And then I added this glow to our baby. So you can see I've got three versions of our baby stacked here. The bottom one is our baby with a few glow effects added to it to give it a nice glowy edge. And then on top, we have our regular baby unchanged from the previous layer. And then on top, we have a duplicate of that baby that I've given a white fill and then added another feathered mask just covering the bottom left. And I did the same for these two warped frames at the very end here. And I'm really happy with how this glow turned out. The last thing was to add the texture and the effects. I got the film emulsion textures used in this animation from this video sponsor, Yellow Images. Yellow Images is an amazing marketplace with over 40,000 high quality premium mockups, fonts, 360 images that we used earlier, and a creative store full of amazing graphic assets like lettering icons, illustrations, patterns, textures, presets, brushes, UI and UX kits, and more. I love using mockups. Selling your design to the client can be as important as the design itself. When you show what the design will look like in the real world, it becomes much more tangible to the client. They can understand it and they'll be much more likely to approve it with less revisions. And that will save you time and money by working on more projects more efficiently. Yellow Images mockups take minutes to make real life looking presentations that will blow away the client and make it easy for them to say yes and approve the final design. They come in high resolution with great lighting, shadows and textures that give a realistic feel to the design. And just for you, I asked Yellow Images for a 30% discount and they gave me 100 coupons that you can claim today. These coupons are limited, so first come, first serve. Get your 30% off with the coupon BENMARRIOTT30. Links in the description. I made a looping texture out of those film emulsion textures by putting a bunch of those into a sequence and setting them to grayscale. I've got a much more detailed tutorial all about the looping texture animations if you want to find out more about that process. I placed that in a comp below our astronaut and above our circle here in this middle scene and then used the set matte effect to take the matte from that circle layer. And I was pretty impressed by how much each of these still look like a moon or a planet surface. I thought that was really cool. I added that same texture comp to our last scene here and I animated it wiping from the top to the bottom. Similar to our vignette technique, I just do a rectangular mask, feathered the edges, and then animated the mask path moving from the top to the very bottom. Then I added a duplicate of our baby spinning on top of that comp and set our film emulsion textures to alpha matte. So they are now only visible inside the baby outline. And this is kind of mimicking that double exposure technique from the True Detective title sequence, where we get an environment within a silhouette. And there's also a few key moments where I've added just a single frame of a paper texture, like at the very start here, one frame after this transition, and at the very end. And these are these yellow comps right here. And that's just to add a bit more impact to those transitions. And then I added some final effects. Now each one of these I put on their own adjustment layer, so I can turn them on and off easily. I added a curves effect to add a bit of blue into the shadows, just added slightly subtle color gray to the whole thing. And then I also added some noise, just set to 6%, and that was to help hide any gradient banding in there, as well as increasing the color depth from eight to 16 bits per channel. 
And at this stage, I was looking at my comp at full resolution and I didn't quite like how clean and crisp these 3D models look compared to the background, which was pretty, you know, textured. And it just didn't feel consistent. So on a new adjustment layer, I had a Gaussian blur and set that to four pixels and added an unsharpened mask on top of that. So that combination blurs away all of these crisp lines and super digital look of these 3D models. So the whole thing's softer and the sharpen is trying to compensate for that and try to get some more detail back. And that also gives a nice halo-y edge around areas of really high contrast, which you can notice quite a lot of the edge of our baby here. This is before and this is after. And I really like this look. And that really helps everything feel considered and connected and part of the same universe. And then the animation is complete. This took me about six hours in After Effects with a lot of experimenting. And I'm really stoked with how this turned out. To discover the best ways to learn motion design, I've created a short playlist of videos that I think you'll enjoy if you've made it this far. Please like the video and consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week. I'll see you in the next video.